Hi everyone, welcome to this video lesson where today we're talking about parallelograms. Let's get started. So first off, we need to know all the properties about parallelograms and I've got six of them for you here. So first of all, opposite sides are congruent. So when you have a parallelogram, which is a particular quadrilateral, by the way, um, opposite sides are, are congruent to each other. So here I have marked up that segment AD is congruent to segment BC, segment AB is congruent to segment DC. We also need to know that opposite angles are congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle B is congruent to angle D. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So we should remember that supplementary means that two angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So consecutive. Consecutive means one after another. So any pair of consecutive angles here, angle A and angle B add up to 180, angle D and angle A would add up to 180, angle C and angle D would add up to 180, C and B add up to 180. Any pair of angles, okay, that basically are one after another in a parallelogram are going to be supplementary to each other. Um, if there's all of the angles in a parallelogram are right angles, if just one of them is uh, right angle. So if I gave you a parallelogram and I said to you that angle A was 90 degrees. Now, of course, this is not drawn to scale. Well, from that last statement that I made about consecutive angles are all supplementary. If this is 90, then A and B have to add up to 180, which means this is 90. And if B is 90, then C is 90. And of course, then D is 90. So if you have a parallelogram, the moment one of those angles is right, then all of them are right. Um, in a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. That's pretty cool. So if I have segment AC and segment BD that, uh, that intersect each other, then where that point is, where the diagonals intersect each other, AE, I'm going to label that point E, is congruent to EC, and DE is congruent to EB. So the diagonals totally bisect each other. That's pretty cool. Also, diagonals will create two congruent triangles. So... Um, basically here, if I draw that diagonal from A to C, or even if I drew the diagonal from D to B, it wouldn't matter. You'd still end up having these triangles that based on their um, si opposite sides of a parallelogram being congruent, we're like, okay, well, these sides were congruent already just by the definition of a parallelogram. And now they share this common third side by the reflexive property, they're congruent to each other. So therefore triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, and you can prove it by side, side, side. You could even prove it by side angle side, given the fact that we said opposite angles were congruent to each other. There's so many different ways, but they're definitely congruent, those two triangles. Now we're gonna take a look at just calculating the value of the variables based on the given information that I just went over about parallelograms. Okay, so what we need to take a look at in the first diagram is that if, you know if we're given a parallelogram, which all of these are, Opposite sides are congruent to each other, so their measures must be equal. So then 21 would be equal to 3.5x, and 5x would be equal to 10y. We just sometimes have to make smart choices. Setting 5x equal to 10y is not really helpful for us because we've got two variables, but I could go ahead and set 21 equal to 3.5x. I would then solve for x and then use that x to substitute in 4x into 5x to then set equal to 10y. In this next problem here, 6.2y would be equal to 124 because they are opposite angles. Opposite angles are congruent to each other, so their measures are equal. And that would let me solve for y. y is 20. And then my opposite angles here, 7x and 56, would be equal to each other. And x is equal to 8. This diagram, um, basically, it doesn't help us about opposite angles being congruent, but something we do need to remember is that consecutive angles add up to 180 degrees. So that would mean, okay, well, I can ma make a relationship about 7x and x plus 6. 7x plus x plus 6 must add up to 180. And then I can use my good solving equation skills to solve for x. Now to solve for y. So there's two different relationships I could basically set up here. I can say, okay, well, 10y plus this x plus 6, which I now know x is 21.75, adds up to 180. Or I can say that 10y is equal to 7x and substitute in that 21.75 in for x there. So I chose to do 10y plus x plus 6 is equal to 180. Use my good solving equation skills in order to solve for y. 
and I end up getting 15.225, which again would be the same thing if I was to set up 10y equal to 7x. Here, if I have one right angle, we learn that then all of the angles are right angles, so that means 15x is equal to 90, so x is 6, and 4.5y would be equal to 90, so y is 20. We learn diagonals are uh, diagonals bisect each other, so that would tell me here that 4x squared is equal to 28, so something we definitely need to remember we can do, we need to divide both sides by 4. We then get x squared equals 7. We then need to take the square root of 7, and I'm just going to leave it at that. x is the square root of 7. Um, and then 10 would be equal to y squared plus 1, subtract uh, 1, and so y is equal to 3. Y could be negative 3 as, all, as well. I could call x positive and negative um, square root of 7. Okay, so now for this last diagram. So we need to solve for x and we need to solve for y. And what we see right now is, okay, y looks like it's half of the diagonal and x is the other half of the other diagonal. And we know that the diagonals bisect each other. So something I do know is, okay, well, if this segment is x, this segment is x. And if this segment is y, this segment's also y. So right now I'm just still not 100%, but what I do see is that I do have two right triangles here. And if I notice, I've got eight and 10. Eight is a leg of this right triangle, 10 is the hypotenuse. So I could say, okay, well this entire side is x plus x. And so imagine I said, okay, I'm just gonna call x plus x a. So this entire side length is a. But then I know a is really broken up into the two congruent segments. So imagine then I did a squared, so this entire length plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. I went ahead, I solved for a, and I ended up getting 6. Well that would then mean that each one of those x values is worth 3. So by using the Pythagorean theorem of that right triangle, I'm able to solve for the missing leg and then I know it's six, and then it's divided equally, so I know those are each three. So now if I wanna calculate y. So y is a little different here, but something I could say is, all right, well y is the hypotenuse of this little skinny triangle, look at that. I know x is three, I know this leg is eight, y is the hypotenuse of this little mini right triangle. So three squared plus eight squared, would be equal to y squared. I would be able to do my good solving, and so y is the square root of 73. Okay, and I'm just gonna kinda outline, that would be me looking at this triangle here, where I know x is three, and then I'm solving for the hypotenuse y. Okay, parallelogram MNPR has points negative three, zero, negative one, three, five, four, and three, one find the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals. So it's always helpful, of course, to do any kind of coordinate pro plane problem by graphing. So I went ahead and I did a sketch of what this looks like. I'm gonna zoom my screen in just a bit more for us. Okay, that looks good. So basically what I need to know is I need to know where the intersection of my diagonals are. Now technically you wouldn't have to draw out a diagram, but it is a little bit helpful to do that so you can game plan. But basically if I know my parallelogram is M, N, P, R, then I know my diagonals would be the points that intersect uh, the points that are M to P, and then my other diagonal is N to R. Okay, so basically what I wanna do is I wanna look at those diagonals M to R, I'm sorry, M to P, and imagine I was to connect those points together. What I really wanna know is I wanna know the midpoint of that diagonal. Because if I figure out the midpoint of those two points, and then I also figure out the midpoint between N and R, if my midpoints are the same, then that's actually the intersection of the diagonal. So if I go to calculate the midpoint from M to P, I would add up my X's, divide by two, add up my Y's, divide by two, and I end up getting one, two, which you can see on my little diagram here, 
one, two is definitely this ordered pair. One, and then up two. If I go ahead and I calculate the midpoint from n to r, and I add up my x's and divide by two, add up my y's, divide by two, I get the exact same answer. The last problem I wanna go through with you is a quick proof. Here it says WXTV it, and ZYVT are parallelograms. So here you have like these diagonal parallelograms that seem to overlap and make this triangle here. We are trying to prove that WX is congruent to ZY. That is what we are trying to prove. We are given that we have this parallelogram and this parallelogram. So think about what we know. We see these two parallelograms. We actually see they share a common side VT. So what I can say is, well, WX is congruent to VT, uh, segment VT, and W segment YZ is also congruent to segment VT. And that's just simply the definition of a parallelogram, that opposite sides are congruent. Now, since they're both congruent to VT, they both have VT in common, then I would be able to say that, well, then WX is, segment WX is congruent to segment YZ because of my transitive property of congruence. I know there's a lot of information here. I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.